action um, and accountability. I now have the great honor of introducing historian, journalist, and political commentator, Vijay Prashad. Welcome, Vijay. Uh, thanks a lot, uh, Bianca. Really honored to be here. It's great to follow Chris. Chris may not remember this, but um, in Gaza, at the aftermath of Operation Protective Edge in 2014, I was really harassing Chris uh, to get information, to get a uh, comment and so on, Chris. You will well remember, we thought that that 2014 bombing, Chris, was the end of the world. This, my friends, is in a different league. This is not 2014. This is the destruction of a part of the earth. Forget just the attempt to annihilate the Palestinians. It's grotesque. I thought I wouldn't see anything as ugly as the 2014 assault, 2,000 people killed in a matter of some weeks. Um, this is infinitely worse than that. I want to ask people to go to the website of the institute I direct, thetricontinental.org. Today, we released a newsletter um, which premiered a painting by the very great Palestinian painter from Gaza, Malak Matar. Um, it's a five meter long painting, the Guernica of Gaza. She calls it Gaza 2024. I really want to encourage you to go and have a look at Malak Matar's painting. It is extraordinary. It shows you that despite everything, despite everything that the Israelis have tried to throw against the Palestinian people for decades, despite everything, the Palestinians continue to dream, continue to fight, and so on, despite everything. I also want to say, Bianca, and I want to underline this pretty firmly, that Israel is losing this. Israel is not winning anything. In fact, Israel has had to move to the so-called phase three of the war, which means they pulled their ground troops out of most of Gaza after the 21 were killed um, just about 10 days ago. They are losing the war, not just um, the public relations war, but they're losing on the ground. They're not able to fulfill their complete objectives. Now, they have displaced two million human beings. Almost the entirety of the Palestinian population in Gaza has been displaced. But having displaced these two million Palestinians, the Israelis are finding themselves in the same position as the United States found itself in Afghanistan with other Western powers, as the United States found itself in Iraq. You can bomb you can destroy, but you cannot break the spirit of people. The Taliban returned. The Afghans rejected the United States, despite immense firepower wielded against them for 20 years. What the United States experienced in Afghanistan is what the Israelis are experiencing in Gaza. There is, in fact, a military challenge to them, which I don't think we should underestimate. Related to that, the Israelis have lost the public relations battle around the world. South Africa's case they took to the International Court of Justice is extremely significant, backed as it was by countries of the global south. Let the global north gather together. Let them do what they want. But they've lost not only their ability to influence the world, they've lost the entire global south. From Indonesia to Namibia to Bolivia, people are standing with Palestine. They are fed up with the bullying that comes from Washington, D.C., London, Paris, etc. Fed up. And the ICJ case is as much the global south taking the global north to the ICJ as it is South Africa disputing Israel at the ICJ. On this point, the cut to Anarwa, the cruel, sadistic cut to Anarwa by Western countries, including the mediocre Prime Minister of Canada, Mr. Justin Trudeau, that cut to Anarwa, that sadistic cut, is a sign of desperation by the global north, not a sign of their power or their influence. It is a sign of their weakness 
and we must see it like that. It is therefore incumbent upon us not to beg these countries to continue funding UNRWA. It is time we put pressure on Turkey, on Indonesia, on China, on other countries of the South to start picking up the bill at UNRWA. We need to pivot away, no longer beggars at the door of the North, but asking the South to stand up with a backbone and fund the Palestinians. If two million people come onto the streets of Jakarta in defense of the Palestinians, where is the Indonesian government? Why are they not coming forward and paying the bill? They have higher growth rate than the United States. Come and assist the Palestinians materially through UNRWA. We are not beggars anymore. We don't want to stand in front of mediocre, desperate politicians like Biden, Sunak, Macron, Olaf Schultz, and the pathetic Justin Trudeau. They have no legitimacy in our eyes. They are spent. Their time is gone. We stand with the Palestinians, but we also stand with all the formerly colonized people who are saying we have a new mood. We no longer want to take your nonsense. The world is ours as much as it's yours. Free Palestine. Pal Palestine will be free. Thanks a lot.